always forget. Um, thank you for being here with us today. Um, we are here with Vice President of First Nonprofit Companies, Cheryl Jones, to talk about um, recovering unemployment over payments, which is a mouthful. Every time I say it, I, I want to um, mix the words up a little bit. Um, but today's presentation is going to be nice and short and sweet. Um, Cheryl will walk us through the opportunities and process. Um, and, you know, if any of you have questions at the end, um, you know, we will have some time for questions and otherwise we will um, get you on your way. So I'm going to share my screen and then Cheryl, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Tylen. Thank you. Okay, how does that look, Cheryl? It so, looks great. Great, okay. Thanks everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a little bit about the history of First Nonprofit. We were founded in 1978. We are a company based out of Chicago, Illinois. We started working with United Ways back in the 1990s, trying to help them um, figure out their insurance issues and everything else. And, and from that, we branched out working in the unemployment area. And today we work with over 2,100 nonprofits, working with over 700,000 employees across the United States and we're part of the Amenta Group family of companies. We can move on to the next. So as we've grown, we've branched out from working with the United Ways. And one of the things that have really helped us go deep into the United, deep into the nonprofit community is partnering with associations like the Montana Nonprofit Association to work with the associations to bring programs out to members across the United States. And we've been working with the Montana nonprofit since for over 15 years, we have over 80 nonprofits in Montana in the state working with us. And you know, through COVID and working with the state of Montana with all of the issues that were going on with unemployment in um, throughout COVID, the state told us that out of almost every nonprofit that has opted to work outside of the state working directly to reimburse the state. Almost every nonprofit that directly reimburses works with first nonprofit with, you know, to work directly with the state. So we're pretty proud of our partnership with the association and with the state of Montana as the way to work directly for funding for unemployment. But you can see all the different associations that we work with throughout the United States to bring this forward. We can go to the next slide. So what's going on in Montana? You know, you're unique in a lot of ways and, and not all of them great in when it comes to funding for unemployment. The minimum amount that anybody can collect in Montana when you're unemployed is $169 a week. So if you're unemployed, and that's that's probably if you're making, you know, minimum wage, you're going to collect $169 a week. The, you can collect unemployment in Montana for 28 weeks. That's the most anybody can collect in the entire United States. Almost every other state, you can only collect unemployment for 26 weeks. So you're unique in the fact that you can collect it for 28 weeks. I live in North Carolina. We can only collect unemployment for 13 weeks. So if we get unemployed in, Mon in North Carolina, we have to find a job within 13 weeks or our unemployment benefits run out. So, so you're lucky in Montana, you have 28 weeks to find a job if you're unemployed. The maximum that anybody in, un, in Montana can collect is $657 a week, or if you're out for the entire 28 weeks, you're gonna collect $17,000. But as an employer, you have to look at that as every time one of your employees collects or opens up a claim for unemployment, you have the liability of $17,000 of claims. So you have to think of that as like health insurance. If you're self-funding for health insurance, every time somebody files a claim, you have the potential of having $17,000 that you're gonna be paid out and liable for unemployment claims. The other thing that's unique to Montana is that wage base. You're paying unemployment taxes in 2022 on the first $38,000 any of your employees earned. And then 
that was a 7.9% increase over 2021. And in 2023, you're going to pay on the first $40,500 each of your employees earns. So that's an automatic increase of what you're going to pay in unemployment going into 2023. So even if you haven't had any unemployment claims, or if you've had low unemployment claims, you're going to get an increase in what you're paying to the state in 2023, because that's sort of, I call it the silent or the hidden increases. That's how the state of Montana is going to increase your unemployment costs, even if they're not going to increase your unemployment rate. So that's something that you have to be aware of each year as the as the new year comes, your unemployment rate gets increased, even though you don't have any unemployment claims. So that's the hidden hidden cost that the state builds into your rate. You can go on to the next slide. So that's why, so prior to the 1970s, nonprofits were exempt from the unemployment system. If you worked for the United Way or the Boys and Girls Clubs and, and you had to lay somebody off, if they were to file for unemployment, they would not have been able to collect any unemployment at all because you were exempt from that system. But in the 1970s, the federal government stepped in and they said, hey, listen, there are enough nonprofits at this point employing enough people that you need to have the same safety net that the for-profit companies have. And that meant that you had to come in and provide unemployment benefits for your employees. But they, they gave a gift to nonprofits and they said, we'll give you two options. One, you can pay into the state unemployment tax system as a merit rated employer, like, like the targets of the world and everybody else and be assessed a surcharge and pay into that system. And, or you can, you can come out, you could not opt into that system. And option two, you can just pay as you go, which meant that you only pay the state when you have an unemployment claim. So instead of paying that tax on that first 38,000 or in 2023 on the first $40,000 each of your employees earn, option two allows you to just agree to pay the state when you have an unemployment claim. So that's, that's the option that they gave all employers. If you could stay with option one, you're going to pay that tax for the first 30, $40,000 in 2023, and you're going to be assessed the surcharges on the loans, Montana paid back their loans, but they also have some other surcharges that they build into the rate to help subsidize the cost of the higher turnover industries, the industries that went out of business during the pandemic, and then the, the administrative surcharges that they put on. But option two, if you just decide to do the, the pay-as-you-go and work with first nonprofits, you're eliminating the surcharges you're not paying based on that $40,000 taxable wage base. You're only paying based on what your average annual claims are, and, and you're not subsidizing those higher turnover industries. And honestly, what we've seen year over year with working with Montana employers is, is we can save you between 40, and I, I was looking back in our files today, up to 40 to 70% over what you will pay if if you're paying into the state unemployment tax system. So in Montana, the savings for employers is pretty dramatic over, you know, North Carolina, we can probably save people about 12 to 15%. So you're you're in a unique position to save much more money than other or other nonprofits in other states. We can move on to the next slide. So this is what your, you get from the state of Montana on an annual basis. They send you your unemployment UI contribution rate. It shows you what your rate is. You see that administrative fund tax rate. If you look at the, the center box that's sort of outlined, you see the UI contribution rate for this organization that is like 0.62%. You see the administ administrative fund tax rate, which they tack on. They, they want you to pay an additional tax rate to help them do pay their administrative costs. And then they're telling you what your taxable wage, wage base, that was 38,000 in 2022, it'll be 40,000 in 2023. And Montana does a four year look back on all of the wages and how they calculate everything. 
So they're, they're, they're a little bit different than other states. But what we would do is we would take and have you look at and give us four years worth of your statements. And then we would give you a rate based on what's going on and what they paid out. But they tell you what your contribution was. And if you look at it, less the benefit charges. So that's what they've paid out. So you've paid in 18,000, they've paid out 14,000. They're telling you what your reserve balance is. So they calculate it out and they do that. So we would ask you to pull this off the, the Montana Unemployment Insurance Division site and then provide that to us. And then we can help you figure out what it is you would save, but we can walk you through that. But those are the, that's the document that we would need in order to help you calculate what your savings are. We can move on. So that, we talk about that, you would find your 2022 tax rate notice. It would include, excuse me, your taxable wage basis, base. Montana allows you to leave the unemployment tax system once a year, and that's not unique just to Montana. You have to make notice that you wanna leave the unemployment tax system effective November 30th. You can only leave the state unemployment system, and I say leave, it's, you have to make notice that you want to change to direct reimbursing status as opposed to a merit rated status. And that's the change effective date of January 1st. So any change that you want to make becomes effective January 1, 2023. And that's so that they, they do that administratively once a year, January 1st, provided they have the paperwork by November 30th. So we really say that you know, everything should sort of happen. We're in October now, so it's 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 fast. It's crazy that it's already October 11th of, you know, this part of the year. So, you know, we, we have time. We would sort of, we can move on and, and look at the next slide. It's, it's pretty simple to make that transition, but at this sort of time of the year, we're sort of moving quickly into how we want to do that. So it's just, you fill out an application with us. We, we, tell you what your savings are gonna be. And then it's just a simple matter of filling out some paperwork. We give it to the state of Montana and handle all of that for you. So it's not a lot of paperwork on your end. We take care of it. We provide it to the state. They issue you a new taxpayer ID. And it's just so that they can recognize you as a reimbursing employer rather than a state tax merit rated employer. So it's just a matter of them flipping a switch so that they know they're not gonna bill you on a quarterly basis. They're just gonna bill you or bill us when there's an unemployment claim. So that's that's the difference of how that happens. We can, we can go on to the next slide. So some of the added services that happen when, when you transition over to First Nonprofit is we have an HR platform and, and that, is it's run by Mineral. They used to be called Think HR. I don't know if any of you already have Think HR through any of your other programs, but what it is, it's an HR platform that has a couple different platforms within that platform. And one of it is it has a living handbook. So you can go in and build handbooks. It, it It's unique, it tracks your policies. So you can drop what you already have into your handbook in here. And if, if any legislative changes happen in Montana, it pops up and it says, listen, this new law happened in Montana and it won't allow you to make any other changes in your handbook until you drop that new legislation into your handbook. So it tracks that and it keeps you compliant at all times for what's happening in the state of Montana. When you have new employees, you can give them that live handbook and then it has it signs and make sure that you get the e-signature tracking each time you have a new employee. So it tracks that. We have over a couple hundred training courses so that staff can take those classes. They can self-assign themselves courses or you can, sign, you can assign out classes and it will track them and give them certificates so that you, know, you can show that they've taken those classes. The third thing is, is that you can ask any sort of question. So if you have um, something comes up and you're not sure what to do, you can come in and ask questions of, of SHRM certified um, HR 
professionals and they will answer those questions for you so that you don't have to Google the answers anymore. You can come in and ask us those questions. There's thousands of curated questions on the website that you can go in. There's webinars and newsletters available to you 24 seven. So all of that is part of what we offer as our services. Um, you can go to the next slide. The other thing that we do is we have a claims monitor. So any unemployment claims that come along, we monitor those for you. If you have a hearing, we set, we have representation at those hearings for you. So you never have to you know, be the expert. We're there with you all the way along. You have four quarterly payments for us. Because Montana, um, you have such a high wage base, you're probably, have, you're probably paying most of your unemployment expenses in the first two calendar quarters. We're going to give you a budgetable expense over four calendar quarters. So you're going to have four equal payments. The 35% average payment is, is going to be a lot higher in Montana. You're going to be much more up to 50 to 60% in Montana. So you, you're going to look at a much higher average savings than most other states. There's going to be no change to how your employees access their unemployment. So if you have to lay somebody off, they're going to still file for unemployment with the state of Montana. If that claim is a legitimate claim, if you've laid them off for no fault of their own, Montana is going to issue them their unemployment check, and they're going to then bill us through First Nonprofit, and then we will reimburse the state for that unemployment claim out of your account. So there's no pooling within the First Nonprofit program. The state pools charges, and you, you share charges with all the other employers. In the first nonprofit program, you're only responsible for your claims charges. You're not paying the claims of any other employers in the first nonprofit program. So that's, and then you get an additional discount as a member of the Montana non Nonprofit Association. So that's one of the benefits of you're being a member of the Montana Association is you get an extra discount coming into the program. Next slide. So again, I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, we work with over 2,100 nonprofits. We've been doing this for 24 years. We have a 99% retention rate. So this is really, when you, when you make the choice to work um, differently than being in the state unemployment tax system, it really is a long-term solution. It's something that you're gonna, you're gonna see that works for you long-term. It's, it's savings that are gonna last. It, it's just, you know, like I said, it's it's simple. It's a not it's an it's a long term solution. The money that you put into your account with First Nonprofit is your money. You're allowing us to hold it on your behalf. Should you decide that um, you want to leave First Nonprofit, that money follows you. So the way that we accumulate money into your account is based on your claims and your average claims size. So we're not we're not ever going to hold more in your account then we think that we need to hold based on your claim. So it's not going to accrue to a point where it's, you know, an astronomical amount of money. We take a look at what your claims charges are. And if we feel like we have enough money in your account on the third quarter, we're likely not going to ask you to put more money into your account for the fourth quarter. So we just are looking at what you need to fund what's going forward. So that's that's it for the most part. I think you know what we'd really like you to do is is ask us to do a savings evaluation. It's a simple um, application. Send that along, and we can turn that around rather quickly. Um, it, again, it's a, it's getting towards a little later in the year, so timing is more of an essence than if we were doing this in May or June. But there's still plenty of time for you all to make a decision. And, and to look at this for January, 2023, as opposed to waiting any longer. And, you know, as we all know, money is tight in all levels of our lives at this point. So if this is something that you can save some money internally at your organization, there's plenty of time for us to help you look at that. So with that, I will open it up if anybody has any questions, but as Thailand said, this is sort of, um, short and sweet and simple way to take a look at how to make some internal savings. Great. And Cheryl, um, would you be able to send me 
the application or whatever for the evaluation, yeah. and I will just yeah. send that out Perfect. to everyone who yeah, registered. Right after we talk. Okay, great. Um, and if anyone has questions, yeah, feel free to take yourself off mute and ask them. Carol, this is Carrie Yaturi. Does that, uh, I'm asking more of an accounting question. So do those contributions then remain on our balance sheet as a prepaid expense or, or where does that savings show on our financial statement? Right, you can show them as a prepaid expense. Either, okay. yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Great. Does anyone else have any questions? You can put them in the chat. You can take yourself off mute. Great. Um, well, I think if there's no questions, um, you know, feel free to ask them. We do have time, but if if not, um, I will send out the recording, and then I will send out any you know applications or evaluation paperwork um, just right as soon as the recording has processed on Zoom. Um, so I'll do it this afternoon. So everyone can look forward to that and you can reach out to Cheryl if you need. Um, I just took her, I took it off screen share, but if anyone um, wants to take a little screenshot um, of her contact information, it's just there, cjones at firstnonprofit.com and then her phone number. Um, yeah, so if anyone has anything, feel free to speak now or you can yep. reach out and share it directly later. Yep, I'm available. So happy to answer any questions offline. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. In the time. I'll get that application right over. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.